when the dead return to prey upon the living, it is a terror beyond understanding. Ever since early times, man has told stories of people returning from beyond the grave to walk the world once again. Driven by everything from blind circumstance, a desire for vengeance, or just an insatiable hunger for the flesh of the living, reanimated corpses have been a source of dread for cultures around the world. What creates these creatures, and what forms do they take? These are the tales of the risen dead. nights were long and cold for the Vikings of Scandinavia. It was here that the tales of the Draugr appear, individuals so consumed by greed or spite in life, they return to the earthly realm after their death to jealously guard their treasures and spread suffering. Truly, they were worthy of the fear they inspired in these fierce Nordic raiders. Recognizable as rotting corpses emitting the stench of decay, Draugr could arise from their tombs once disturbed. Possessing a variety of supernatural abilities, these creatures could shapeshift into animals or wisps of smoke, control the weather, spread disease, grow in size, or bestow curses to bring about an ill fate for their victims. Nocturnal and sadistic in nature, the Draugr would go on to decimate livestock and often tortured their prey. Even more troublingly, those that died at the hands of a Draugr were thought to return as one themselves. Although fearsome, these Norse undead were not invincible. Decapitation and cremation were both believed to be effective means of defeating a Draugr. Despite its superhuman strength, the sagas tell it would also be possible for a hero to wrestle the creature back into its grave. Throughout Bulgaria and Southern Europe, belief in the risen dead proliferated for quite some time. Known by many names throughout the region, the Vrykolakas is a prominent vampire-like figure. Indeed, archaeological excavations indicate practices intended to prevent the dead from rising have been practiced here for quite some time. Typically, anyone with an impious lifestyle or burial was liable to become a Vrykolakas after their death. Lycanthropes, or those that ate meat from a sheep that a wolf had bitten, could also be at risk. Unlike the Draugr, Vrykolakas had a healthy skin complexion and solid build. After rising, it would go about knocking on doors, ignoring households that did not answer, and cursing ones that did, who eventually die and become undead themselves. Outbreaks of disease were also blamed on them. Preferring to suffocate or crush its prey, the Vrykolakas would then feast on the flesh and liver of the victim. Those looking to slay one of these creatures were told to find the tomb where it rested on Saturdays. There, its body could be exercised, mutilated, or cremated. Originating from the Middle Eastern folklore, the ghoul has become a catch-all for any cannibalistic humanoid. Inhabiting cemeteries or secluded areas, they first rose to prominence in Western culture following the translation of Arabian Nights. Described in the Hadith as a kind of demonic jinn, ghouls were supposed to feast on corpses that lie in graves. In later versions of the lore, the wicked could rise from death as ghouls or be transformed into one after feeding on human flesh. Like most undead, ghouls avoid sunlight. Often pictured as female, they may have the power to shapeshift, which they use to lure travelers or small children to feed on. Their true form has been described as that of a hunched humanoid with pale skin, sometimes with bestial features and sharp claws. Though the Orient is filled with folklore involving various malign spirits, it is the Jiangxi of China that have risen to prominence as the foremost corporeal undead. 
pictured as an animated corpse stiff with, with rigor mortis. The Jiang Shi could only travel at night by hopping on its legs. With pale green skin and white hair, the monster could appear in any stage of decomposition, often with a paper talisman on their forehead. As with their western counterparts, there were various ways one could return as a Jiang Shi, such as improper burial, a tragic death, occult rituals, or absorbing sufficient amounts of negative energy. Not interested in the flesh or blood of the living, they would instead feed on the very life force of anyone that crossed their path. Also, like other undead around the world, Jiang Shi had an extensive list of weaknesses. Mirrors, peach tree wood, rice, vinegar, black dog's blood, and more were all thought to repel them, forcing them to flee back to their dark lair. While some Native American legends, such as the Skinwalker or Wendigo, have permeated modern pop culture, one is rarely mentioned, the Baycock. Taking the form of a skeletal warrior with red eyes, this undead was able to turn invisible, fly, and attack its victims with its club and arrows. It was feared by the people of the Great Lakes region. Rising from a tragic end, Baycocks were the animated remains of warriors that died in a state of shame or dishonor. Restless, they would subdue living warriors or hunters with poison from their invisible arrows, often paralyzing their victims with a shrill howl. The Baycock would then devour their liver and replace it with a stone, leaving them to die sometime later with no scar tissue from the wound visible. Preferring isolated prey, they only attacked lone targets and avoided civilization. There are few recorded weaknesses for this kind of living dead. As usual, fire is often suggested as a weapon against them, although giving their bones a proper funeral may allow them to finally rest in the afterlife. I will knock down the gates of the netherworld. I will smash the doorposts and leave the doors flat down, and will let the dead go up to eat the living. The dead will outnumber the living. So proclaims the goddess Ishtar in the Epic of Gilgamesh from 1800 BC. This work from ancient Mesopotamia forms one of the first written accounts of the predatory undead. The following centuries would give rise to countless more tales. Most are aware of Bram Stoker's classic vampire novel Dracula and its historical 15th century inspiration, Vlad the Impaler. Many, however, are not familiar with the Irish legend of Apartak. Dating back to the 5th century, Apartak was said to be one of several cruel warlords that ruled over Ireland at the time. Feared for his alleged use of dark magical power, he was killed by a rival chieftain named Athan at the behest of his own people. Refusing to remain in his grave, Abertak returned several times after being slain, demanding a bull filled with the blood of his servants for sustenance. After consulting a druid, Cathan pierced Abertak with a sword of yew wood, buried him upside down, and placed a boulder and thorns over his grave to finally vanquish him. To this day, in Slaverty, near where these events transpired, a single hawthorn tree stands beside a boulder where Abertak is said to lie. A recent attempt to cut it down resulted in a worker's hand being injured with a chain, causing its blood to sink ominously into the earth. 10th century Kyoto, Japan, was ravaged by civil war. A marriage dispute had led to the death of a samurai named Masakado after he declared himself the new emperor of the provinces he had conquered. After his head was submitted for a bounty reward, his daughter, Takiyasha, utilized her knowledge of the occult to conjure a Gajadokuru, 
from the bones of those that had died in the battle. Standing at over ten meters tall, the skeletal creature devoured any humans it could find. Thought to be indestructible, the Gasha Tokuru could only be warded off with Shinto charms. Kyoto suffered from the creature until Masakado's head was moved to a grave in Shibasaki, where it remains to this day near the Tokyo Imperial Palace. Other than battlefields, Yashidokuru could also rise from areas where mass starvation had taken place, as those that did not receive proper burial rites could rise together as they sought revenge for their neglect. Though large in size, they could be silent for a time, or possibly turn invisible as they stalked their prey. Only when it had expelled the malice it carried would the Gashidokuru finally crumble. Belief in the undead thrived into the late Middle Ages, with the church taking a stand against necromancy and superstition being widespread. The living dead were seen as a blasphemous mockery of the resurrection of Christ, with Satan and his minions the ones to animate the corpses of mortals. Known as revenants, they were thought to commune with witches, the body of a hanged man being particularly sought after for this purpose. One account from the 1400s concerns Robert of Killiburn, a North Yorkshire man that had repeatedly risen from his grave at night, terrifying the locals and attracting a pack of dogs. Some villagers finally captured him in a graveyard. A priest arrived to hear his confession, and he finally found eternal rest. Another tale from 1751 by an abbot named Augustine Calme describes the body of a young boy falling backwards with a loud noise after the demon inhabiting it had been cast out, leaving the empty corpse to be buried unceremoniously. Lastly, a Welsh knight named William Lodden once approached the Bishop of Hereford about a wicked man that had returned from the dead to spread disease among the villagers. Despite following the bishop's advice to decapitate the body and sprinkle it with holy water, the nightly attacks continued until few were left alive. Hearing the revenant call his name one night, William wrestled it back into its grave and split its head in two, thus finally halting the terror. Of all the horrors facing the walking dead, however, selling them life insurance would have to be the worst. <laughs>